What's going on everyone? I am back, Will the Comic Beast here, and today I'm bringing you my new comic book day reviews for the June 14th new comic book day. I have SEVEN books plus one, so eight books that I'm talking about here today. I hope you're all excited. Like I said, I'm back. I took two weeks off of my reviews. I'm excited to be back. I hope you're all ready. I had a ton of stuff for the end of the school year, but now school is over and I'm here focusing on my channel and giving you all content that you enjoy. So before we get into it, smash the subscribe. Check out my eBay page. I got a ton of stuff up there. I'm putting out three shirts every single day or three pieces of clothing every single day. So make sure you go check out my eBay page. The link is down below. So without further ado, let's get into this week's new comic book day reviews. Alright, so the first book that I'm going to be talking about is Green Lantern issue number two, and I had to pick up this awesome Kilowog variant pouring himself a cup of tea during a fight that's going on. I really enjoyed this issue. I enjoyed issue number one when it first came out, and issue number two picked up right where it left off, and I'm enjoying it. So this issue opens up with Hal Jordan in a virtual reality plane. He does end up crashing it. Um, we just get to see what he's fully capable of, I guess. Um, but we also get to see Green Lantern Hal Jordan, you know, stop crime. And he's having a good time while he's doing it. So this issue revolves around three different stories. And the first one is showing Hal Jordan, like, testing the ring's limits and seeing how far the ring can go. And the second story, which is, like, kind of like a two-in-one, it bounces between John... Uh, Stewart's time on Earth and to the other Green Lanterns um, in different universes that be seem to be connected to Jon Stewart somehow. And, you know, this was a really solid issue. I really enjoyed it. We got to see how Jon Stewart is kind of like the heart of the Green Lantern Corps. I think he's going to be getting his own series, but you can fact check me on that. I think it's like September or something. I'm not sure. I may be making stuff up, but I can't remember. But if so, I'm really going to be picking that one up. But overall, I really enjoyed issue number two of Green Lantern, and I'm excited to see what issue number three has to offer. All right, up next, we got Venom Lethal Protector issue number four. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of Venom, and one of my other favorite characters is Doctor Doom. I think he's a really awesome Marvel villain, and I'm a huge fan of him as well. So this issue, I want to start off by talking about the interior art. I was a fan of the interior art. I liked it, especially the last panel of the um, page that we've got to see. Or not really a panel, it's a whole page. But I really loved it. I didn't want. I don't want to show it because it kind of spoils the whole issue. Um, but if you're reading this one, you know what I'm talking about. The very last page, that awesome connection between the symbiote and um, Doctor Doom. I think I just spoiled it anyway. Yeah, you sound like a dog with peanut butter on the roof of your mouth. But that is a really awesome thing to see that I got really happy seeing. I thought that was awesome. Two of my favorite characters connected as one. So in this issue, we got to see Venom and Silver Sable, and they're battling to stop the planet from the planet killing technology um, from falling into the wrong hands. And just as they're about to save everything and stop the bad guys, a new person enters, and that's Doctor Doom. And we see that he has his own plans for this technology, and he has his own plans for Eddie Brock. And like I said, that leads to the events at the end of the issue, and overall, it was just a very solid issue number four. I'm not sure how many issues this is, but I'm really enjoying it. All right, so the next book is some is a book that I'm really enjoying. I know of multiple people that talked about this book, and they weren't the biggest fans, and I, I don't know why. I'm enjoying it. So we got something epic, issue number two, and boy, am I loving this one. I just want to start off by saying that my favorite page in this was... uh. This one right here, you get to see this panel at the very bottom, and I'm just going to read it to you. So he's imagining this guy, and this guy is like getting super strong. He's getting muscles, so he says, yes, yes, I'm Dwayne Johnson now. He goes, no, 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 scratch that. I'm Dave freaking Batista, and I thought that was awesome. That was very cool to see. I laughed when I saw that. Um, I'm a huge fan of Batista. My... My bodybuilding coach, Terrence Ruffin, trains at Dave Batista's gym, and they've met a couple of times, and I'm trying to go down to Florida to train with my bodybuilding coach, and who knows, maybe I'll have the chance to meet him. Um, but that would be very cool, and I'm just, you know, that's like the highest level that could happen. Um, but going back to the book, Something Epic, issue number two, very solid read. So this book is focusing around the main character. His name is Danny Dillon. You know, he has two first names. Ricky Bot, he's got two first names. But this was a very solid issue. And issue number one, we, it was kind of a setup. We got to see everything that was going on and why, he, why this kid is seeing everything. And it's because he has such a strong imagination. You know, this book isn't like super scary, but it gives off horror 
vibes and it fit kind of fits into the horror genre which i really like it's one of my favorite genres in comics and i'm just really enjoying it and this issue mainly focuses on the weight of Danny's own imagination and how it kind of takes a toll on him and on top of everything that he's experiencing in his own life. So overall, this was a very solid issue. I absolutely love the art inside this book. It's dark, it's gloomy, and then they use colors right at the perfect time, very vibrant colors. I really like it, so I hope that we can keep it up with issue number three coming out sometime soon. All right, so up next, we got a number one. We got Black Panther issue number one, and this one kind of let me down. I was really looking forward to this one, but it was kind of boring. Um, Black Panther kind of felt like the Batman a little bit in this issue. He's watching over Wakanda at night, and he's making sure that there is no crime going on. He's making sure that the citizens of Wakanda are safe, protected, and all of the above. And he is choosing to, like, secretly continue his role as Black Panther to protect Wakanda, kind of like Batman. Um, I don't know. I thought it was kind of boring. This issue is mostly just dialogue. It's mostly narration of Black Panther, and we don't we barely see any action we don't see anything crazy happen it's just setting up for issues to come and it's just all plot development and it wasn't my favorite read so hopefully i'm going to give this one more try and if I, we don't see anything crazy happen then i'm probably going to be dropping it up next we got cosmic ghost rider issue number 4 um i absolutely love the art inside of this book i the art inside of this book is probably my favorite attribute to this comic um this issue was kind of like the last one, kind of a letdown because you know, I, I like I like build ups to a big event, and this kind of didn't have anything, uh, big build ups to it. You know, usually like in the first issue, I thought the first issue was the best issue of this series. Um, so issue number one, we got to see these two cosmic ghost riders, and we had no idea how they're connected. So I was expecting that in the upcoming issues that we would at least see like clues and just spots here and there to understand how these two are connected but it just jumps straight to issue number four jumps to the whole big reveal and just explains the whole other origin of the other cosmic ghost rider it doesn't give us any tips or things along the way it just boom all out origin story of this other um ghost rider and we get to figure out why there's multiple different versions of the Ghost Rider, and then we get to see some action going on, and then we get to see even more Cosmic Ghost Riders. So, you know, it was kind of, it, was, it wasn't it was terrible. I'm not saying that. It, I, I think it's a good read. I, th I thought it was pretty solid. It's just that I didn't like how they brought everything to be or how everything came to be. They just threw it all on you. But overall, I thought it was a decent read. It wasn't terrible, and it wasn't great either. All right, so up next we got Extreme Venom versus is issue number three, and I am enjoying this. I think it's fun. I think it's entertaining. I'm not the biggest fan of the art, or at least for some of the stories. There's three different uh, stories in each issue, and I think it's a fun way to do that because you're, they're introducing multiple characters, first appearances in every single issue, and they're just really solid, fun reads. Like the last one, we got to see a Venom jester. This issue, we got to see uh, like the gun-slinging Spider-Man on a horse with Spider-Horse or whatever it was called um but we just got to see a ton of cool characters being introduced and one of my favorite parts about this was the backup story um that ty templeton did i'm a huge fan of ty templeton from the batman adventures series um and i think it was just fun just looking at it the venom carnage just all the characters i thought that was pretty cool so overall i really enjoyed this one and i can't wait to see what other characters are going to be introduced in the upcoming issues Alright, so the next book took me by complete surprise. I had no idea that this book was coming out, or I had no idea what this book was, but it completely took me by surprise, and it's a contender for my read of the week. Um, it's between this one and the next book that I'm going to be talking about. Um, we got Void Rivals, issue number one. This book was very solid. Image is kind of on a comeback right now. There was a period where I was not liking anything. Then they came out with Junkyard Joe, and now they got this. Uh, we're only one issue in, but I'm really enjoying it. They also have Ice Cream Man, which is probably my favorite Image comic. Um, but overall, Image is on the come up. So we got Void Rivals, and this one opens up it starts with an aftermath of a dog fight in space and it causes this pilot crashing down onto a remote moon where only he and an android are there to keep themselves alive um and it quickly moves forward and we get to see that there's another person who was in the exact same situation came down crashed and they thought they were the only ones so they are enemies they are usually 
by, uh, fighting each other, and they're two ancestral sworn enemies. But they have to work together. They have to be able to get out of this planet somehow. And while they're trying to find a way to leave and get back to their home, they come across this giant machine. And it wakes up and it talks to these people and it's asking how long he's been here. And they have no idea. They just crashed onto this planet. And we get to find out that this giant machine is a transformer. And I thought that was crazy. I, when I was reading this, I was like, is this a transformer? And then it transformed into a jet, flew away, and just left them stranded. So I just want to read this little thing at the very end. Um, it's the... It's a note. It's a letter by Robert Robert Kirkman, um, who wrote this. So it says, "Okay, secrets out. Void Rivals takes place in the new Energon universe. What is that you say? Why it's a shared universe that will include an assortment of our upcoming Transformers and GI Joe comics from Skybound, as well as a new world of characters created by yours truly." And the esteemed Lorenzo D. Felici. And then moving on, it says, Anyway, I'm excited. I'm hoping it comes through in my own writing. I'm a huge fan of Transformers and G.I. Joe and everything Hasbro has done with them over the last few decades. So I thought that was pretty cool. We're going to be seeing some awesome, iconic characters, hopefully. Hopefully we get to see some really cool Transformers and G.I. Joe characters. But overall, this was a very solid issue number one, and I highly recommend it. And the last book on the list here today was the other contender for my Read of the Week, Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 21. I mean, just look at that cover. That cover is absolutely phenomenal. First thing you open this, you get awesome art. You get crazy panels. Like, the second page is a double-page spread of clowns demons dinosaurs nothing everything you'd expect in a spawn book and <laughs> as you saw by the thumbnail dinosaurs clowns demons what's happening i don't even know it's just so much craziness going on it's so much fun i'm reading this book and it's just action-packed it's fun it's just a very entertaining comic book so we get to see that whole interaction that whole battle in the very first couple pages and after that first like four pages i think we get to they travel back in time like an hour and 36 minutes previous to the whole thing and we get to see that gunslinger spawn is sleeping um and he's choosing to sleep rather than talk with his team about the upcoming battle that they're going to be having and that because he wants to sleep because he's not really friends with any of these people that he has to work with he's just doing it for his own sake um they don't trust each other, and they don't want to work together. Um, but I thought the funniest thing about this was that Gunslinger, since he's from the 19th century, he has no idea what a dinosaur is, so I thought that was pretty funny. But overall, Gunslinger Spawn is always crushing it, and I really enjoyed this issue. All right, so there you have it. I hope that wasn't too bad to listen to. I'm a little rusty after taking two weeks off. I got to get back in my groove. But I hope you all enjoyed this week's episode of my new comic book day reviews for the June 14th new comic book day those were all the books that i picked up hope you all enjoyed it leave it in the comments below what did you enjoy what books did you pick up make sure you go check out my ebay shop the link is in the description below smash that subscribe i'm will the comic beast and i'll catch you next time party on dudes searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless uh, a sea of the aimless i don't want to be one of the nameless i'ma wake up with the mindset that one day i'm gonna make it and i don't be fine if I don't break my limitations. Don't try to stop me. I exist to write my own story. I'll make a decision if I want some peace or if I want the glory. Yeah.